What's up everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. Today, I got a very special surprise for you guys. It may not be the biggest surprise in the world, uh, but if you're a Z guy, you probably had this issue if you ordered the wrong coilovers and you wonder how to solve this problem. Uh, it's a very common problem if you don't have the right coilovers or true coilovers. And I got another surprise from a really cool company. So let's go in the garage and I'll show you guys what we got. So what we have, as you guys can see, we have rear buckets that have camber adjustments for the rear springs on Z's. Uh, these are from FDF Fab. They make probably the best stuff. Those dudes are too smart for their own good and too smart for my own wallet. So I usually just buy everything they got. I have their hood vents. I have their angle kit, the Mega Mantis kit, and now I have their rear arms. They're actually the only people that make these rear arms for spring buckets. Now, typically, everybody wants to have true coilovers. And if you don't know what true coilovers are, true coilovers are basically like this. They have the spring on the shock itself. And then if you have a spring and cup set up, which comes stock on the Z's, if you have that style, then the spring is separate than the shock. So once I get this wheel off, I'll be able to show you guys, but they don't have good cambers adju camber adjustments. If you lower these or slam them, you'll get crazy toe in, so then you need toe arms, but even when you can adjust the toe, the camber is atrocious. You only get a certain amount of adjustments with the eccentric bolts. So in order to fix that, you either go true coil over so you can delete the spring and cup and get an actual adjustable arm, or you get these. As you can see, these are built crazy well. You would think that a machine makes these, but these are hand welded and everything. Big props to those guys over at FDF. They really get the best guys to build their stuff. I have zero complaints with any of the stuff that they make and any of the stuff I bought from them. Now, the seat. As you can see, I have a Sparco. I think that's a circuit two or a circuit seat. So only this really fits me. It's perfectly set up for me and I'm not the biggest dude. So if you're not necessarily skinny, you don't really fit in my driver's seat. But for the passenger seat, I definitely want to give people a ride along. I definitely want people sitting in the seat, having fun, going on whatever road trip or wherever I decide to drive this. And some people aren't that small. So I got an Evo XL, as you see. It basically matches that. Obviously, it doesn't have the Halo or the Hans device, as some people call it. But this will fit all the big boys so i can have whoever i want in the car i don't have to worry about it as long as they can crawl over a cage they can fit in the car so in this video we're going to be putting these arms on i do have pieces for the front so i'll try and get those on also and hopefully we'll have the car on the ground worst case scenario this takes two videos because i will be on vacation this weekend into next week so hopefully i can get at least a video out for you guys so you guys can see how the rears go on and hopefully it goes on the ground but we'll see so we'll take this wheel off and we'll get to it all right so this is the rear suspension on the z as you can see i have a strut right here or a shock if you will and then the spring is separate unlike the front now what the arm i got it replaces this as you can see there's no adjustment here there's no eccentric bolt and on the inside there's an eccentric bolt I'll be able to get, show you guys that in a few minutes once we get under the car but so 
what I want to do is start taking this bolt out. Hopefully that comes loose pretty quick. I do have to get eccentric lockouts for the inside bolt uh, because I don't think I have those. I don't remember. I haven't really looked under it. I didn't think about it until now. So I should get eccentric bolts. They should be here soon. Um, but for now, these will go on just fine. It's just eccentric bolts are easier. You don't have to worry about them moving on you or anything like that. So I'll set you guys up and we'll start taking this off. All right, guys. So we'll start getting this bolt off. Uh, it may be a little bit hard to see. My light died, so I'm waiting for that to charge. So we'll get right at it. And I misplaced my wrench. There we go. So this is a 17 millimeter. Nice, came right off. So, it's good to use a jack under these springs. Uh, my spring wasn't that compressed because my car was really slammed. Um, it's good to use a jack under these spring buckets when you take them out, just in case there's pressure on that spring so it doesn't shoot down if you manage to get the bolt out. But, as you can see, one, your arm shouldn't do this. See now, if you take your bolt out and your it still does this, obviously you can see the spring isn't, you know, making it make pushing tension on the arm. The rear bushing is seized. Not that good. So I might have to fight with that inner bolt trying to get it out, which should be fun, but overall you should be able to just push this down and pull this. Ideally not dropping it like that, but who cares? So now that I got the spring out and this loose, now I can go on the inside and try and get that done. Spring buckets right here. And it should be able to move pretty easily. It shouldn't be this stuck up, even with the bolt tight. So I may need to get the hammer in here and really go at this bolt, but let me see what I can do anyways. So this side is the nut. I wonder if I can fit my impact gun in there. If it's even the right socket. Which is the worst. It's the worst when you crawl under the car and end up having the wrong socket for the, the job. All right, now I have the right socket. So, actually my impact gun will fit on this side, that's pretty good. I don't feel like taking the exhaust down. So, we're going to work around it. Alright, and then I need to see if I can grab my wrench on this side. Alright. So, that's stuck. Let's see if I grab a breaker bar. Alright guys, well, it's pretty simple. I'll show you guys the eccentric bolts. Maybe it's easier to see on this side. If you see this right here, see how it has a washer? And it's not centered? That's the eccentric. So, I'll go ahead and fight with this and we'll be back in a minute. So I got the arm out. As you can see, this thing's pretty light for what it is. And here's the eccentric bolt. As you can see, there's a flat spot on the bolt here. And the eccentric bolt itself or the eccentric washer, sorry, is like this. So it fits in to there, and it's oblong. See how the hole's not centered? So whenever you twist this bolt, it would change the position of the arm. It would either push it inward or push it outward. And what this washer sits in 
was like these two little it's kind of hard to see Let's see if I can get a light in there for you guys I don't know if you guys could see that but there's two little pieces where the washer sits in so basically like two walls that that washer sits between and that will give you your camber adjustment a lot of cars have these uh, they're not a bad adjustment it just sucks when they're stuck in the bushing kind of like mine was it wasn't as stuck as I really thought it was but definitely better to have fully adjustable arms I can get I'm guessing I don't know the exact number but you can probably get quadruple the amount of adjustment just from going to lockout bolts and an adjustable arm maybe even more than that you could probably go to like 20 degrees of camber if you really wanted to uh, I know the FDF Mega Man is kit if you're like a stancy guy you probably could do that the car drives horrible when you do that because I accidentally did it when I put it on I just slapped it on with the most camber I could possibly get on it and just kind of see how it went uh, yeah don't do that it drives the most unsafe I've ever felt a car drive and I worked in dealerships so it says a lot so now I got this out hopefully this uh, will be get replaced soon but I can put it back together how it is now doesn't really matter what I did notice though if you've seen in the time lapse I started messing with this ear here I don't know if it's supposed to be shaped like that I mean it looks like it's square but when I had the arm in there let me see if I can repeat how it was Sorry for using headphones, but when I have this in here, it's just kind of placed in there. Watch how this wiggles. Let's see if I can get it in there. Yeah, there you go. You see how the subframe wiggles like that? I looked and there was no cracks in it, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be way beefier. But then again, when there's a bolt through it, it definitely does add a nice bit of structural rigidity here but it's kind of surprising that z's don't have any issues with that being weak maybe if you got a thousand horsepower this subframe won't really take it but yeah i'm gonna keep an eye on that make sure that doesn't crack worst case scenario i'll just weld it so this is the arm show you guys out of the box this thing is beautiful anyways Heim joint on this side, it's got these spacers, can't go without these. These are the new style spacers that they have, they're pretty nice. I have the older style spacers on the front, um, and I had to order a new arm, so I had to order the new style spacers. They're pretty nice. The quality of this machining is crazy. Just gonna slide in here might take a little bit of persuasion yeah. it's meant to fit in there perfectly so I'm not surprised that I gotta tap it in a little bit no big deal can't forget this spacer here also quick tip so this is fully adjustable you can adjust this probably about like out to there I would guess I haven't maxed these out um, but always 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 bottom out your adjustments first before you put them on the car because then they will be even so if I started you know if I spun this drop those spacers but see how this side's sticking out now now if I went to adjust it on the car what I'm supposed to do is spin this center nut and it expands both sides the heim joint side and the inside so theoretically they would both be offset so what you want to do is bottom this all the way out and then bottom that side all the way out so you know that your adjustments will be even and you'll have the even amount of threads and the correct amount of threads on each side when you adjust it. 
So throw these back in. Now I messed with all the adjustments. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's bottomed out. Make sure this is spun all the way in. It seems complicated now, but once it's on the car, you'll see how easy this is to adjust. I don't know if we'll get to doing the alignment today, but hopefully, at the very least, next episode, we'll be driving the car and aligning the car. Now, I'm not doing in a, an alignment on a alignment rack uh, that's the proper way to do it but I don't have the access to one so I have two plates and I'm gonna where I put my hammer I'm going to visualize the camber I don't want to damage this too much Persuasion never hurt. There we go. Just let that hang. Can't forget the other side's an eccentric washer. It can only go on one way. I'll put the nut. And then I'm going to triple check that this is adjusted correctly. All right. So I know that's square. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the arm on this side. Now I'm going to adjust this until the hole lines up on the outside. It's kind of like the easiest way to do it. This is just a lock nut, so that doesn't really matter if that spins. Only the black one has to spin. And of course this will change once I move the eccentric bolt, but this is just to get it in line for now. So now get this lined up. And it went in smooth. But I just realized I forgot the spring because I'm an idiot. So I'm going to go grab the spring. We'll put that up. place this up in the spot it needs to go to. Alright. Place that in there. Now what you want to do is grab a jack and jack up on this so that it lines up perfectly because you have to compress the spring a little bit. I could adjust the collar but I want to leave both sides exactly the way they were before I started doing this so that it could be somewhat drivable or close to the alignment that I want and the spring rate that I want. So I jack the jack up. Make sure this is. Oh, drop my leg. Move this. It's probably easier for you guys to see that way. Make sure this is in the right spot. And it'll go up. Make sure that aligns. There we 
go. So that's it. Now I need the nut. Slap that in on the inside. Get the wrench on the back side. Super easy. Now the arm is on. And I can put it on the inside. Now what I'm doing until the eccentric uh, lockout kit gets here, I'm going to adjust these the same on both sides so that they're equal and then I can do the alignment from there. And uh, once the lockout kits get, get, uh, kit gets here, I can redo the alignment or I can just leave these until the next time I adjust it and put them in. We'll see what I end up doing, but now I can just tighten this and all my adjustment is in here. So I don't even have to unbolt any components or anything like that. I just got to loosen these nuts here and it adjusts super easy. That's what I love about these FDF kits. The, the thought that goes behind them is amazing. Alright, so that's all tight. Springs in. I do have to adjust the preload a little bit. And now that I have everything up, I did notice that my spring is slightly off of the cup that it's supposed to be in. Uh, so I'll just adjust that off camera when I go to adjust the collars on these for the preload. But that's how you install an FDF arm. Now, I'll show you guys how to properly adjust this once we go to do the alignment. But for now, that'll be all. That's how you put the FDF arms on. Honestly, these are amazing. It's always better to be true coilover, but the fact that this works and is so clean and looks so nice and the ease of adjustment, unbelievable. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out FDF Fab, Go check them out there. You'll see uh, further in the video. Once I start aligning this, you'll see that this is the easiest suspension parts to align and you have so much adjustment that you can get yourself in trouble. Um, so now we'll move up to the front. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. It's the next day and we are going to start messing with the front. Uh, I know I did say I was gonna align it next. Uh, first, I gotta put the front back together. So let's get started on that. So first, we'll do a little damage report. Here's the new arm, and then there's the old arm. As you can see, this is what the spacers look like. This one's a little messed up because uh, your boy didn't know how to set up this alignment kit before but it has these style spacers now what I was waiting on was these style spacers just like in the rear and these basically
slide on here and make this wider so the heim joint doesn't hit anything. Now this goes right on the top of the knuckle. As you can see, I got the V1 kit if you know FDF fab kits. Uh, I have the V1 kit now with a V2 lower arm and a V2 upper arm because I broke it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see on camera, but that's not supposed to be curved right there. This happened because I snapped the tie rod having two big wheels. The wheel hit the inside of the wheel well, snapped the tie rod, and then basically I just banged out and broke the other tie rod. But that twisted that arm and it bent the lower arm exactly how it was like supposed to be before. And I already put that on. So this was already supposed to be together once I got these arms. I just forgot to order those spacers. Now, I don't know if you guys can see my lower arm here. The coilover is tilted. Now, it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be more, I don't know, equal, if it's easier to say it like that. Now, the time joint on this end, near the subframe, bent when all that happened. So, I just have to swap out that heim joint, put the upper control arm on with the new spacers, and then I probably will raise the car maybe an inch to a half inch. Uh, I won't bore you guys because that's just a, a simple uh, boring process. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to adjust coilovers, comment down below and I'll show you guys in a future video. Now grab an impact gun, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take the shock off, possibly take this one off to the rear arm, and then this, and then I should be able to swing this out and take that heim joint off. So, so I fought with this for a while. Let me grab the old heim joint and show you guys. What happened? So I don't know if it's easy to see or not, but that thing is bent to shit. So I'm gonna save this just for the jam nut and who knows, maybe I'll try and rebend it. I doubt I'll be able to rebend it because it's solid, but it's not bad to have a somewhat good spare, so. I'll keep that along with the other arm. Now I have the old spacers on the new Heim joint. Uh, typically the threads wouldn't be that bad, but I neglected this car for like two years. So a lot of things got rusty and haven't moved in a while. So I had to basically uh, chase out the threads just to clean them up, clean up a little bit of the rust, and after that it was perfectly fine. But the fight to get that old one out was not it. What I'm going to do is tighten all this down, and then I'll skip the part where I raise all the shocks, or the coilovers, about an inch. And then next, you guys will see it on the ground. So I got all four corners raised about five eighths of an inch. Uh, 
That should be pretty good. It shouldn't be too slammed now. We'll see how the ride height is once I get it on the ground, but uh, just as a visual, kind of like a reward, basically, uh, a small win. We're going to put it on the ground, and I'm just going to honestly look at it <laughs> and see where I need to go next. And then next video, we'll align the car and change the brakes. So other than that, let's get to it. Look at this that was definitely extremely rewarding getting this thing on the ground it looks so good still too much camber in the rear it looks like how it was before I put those arms on uh, so it's pretty much the same alignment uh, so I'm gonna when I do the alignment next video I'll take some camber out of that make it more positive so this will fit better. Uh, I think I'm going to stay with the height just for practicality reasons. It's still pretty low, but the front seems to be pretty good. Now, I may have to change the caster or maybe when I mount this that'll clear but right now the bumper keeps flopping onto the tire here but there's a big gap here so something's definitely just misaligned I can definitely line that back up to make it look good hopefully it doesn't touch when it turns but I'll adjust the angle kit for that but overall besides an alignment it looks great. I love it. Love the new front bumper. The side skirt needs a little work. The back needs to be pushed out. I don't know if you can see how much this sticks out. Obviously the the fender cut makes it look like it sticks out more, but it sticks out a lot here versus the back, so I have to even that out. And I guess I'll tidy some stuff up and get the exterior going and the alignment going next video and then after that we'll probably do the paint and we might be ready to drive but I think that's it for today once again thank you guys for subscribing thank you guys for commenting I really appreciate the support uh, you guys have been showing me a good amount of love on this build and Please stay tuned for more videos. So like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you guys next time.